On this edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at the best version of yourself. Becoming the best version of yourself. Have you ever heard that expression before? You're supposed to become the best version of yourself. Have you ever thought about what, what, would, what would the best version of yourself look like? What would the best version of yourself be like? That's what we're all supposed to come. One of the great um, heroes of the Old Testament is the prophet Elijah. Elijah is the prophet of fire. And we know that St. John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. And Jesus says some beautiful words of affirmation about John the Baptist. I mean, here is Jesus, who is the Lord, who is the, the light of the world, and you get the impression Jesus was impressed with John the Baptist, because in John chapter 5, verse 36, Jesus says of John the Baptist, he says, he was a burning and shining lamp. Isn't that beautiful? That's what Jesus thought about John the Baptist. He was a burning and shining lamp. And we know that Jesus, in, in, in Luke chapter 12, verse 49, Jesus says, I have come to set the earth on fire. And how I wish it were already blazing. That's why Jesus came to this world. He came to set this world on fire with the Holy Spirit. And we know on the day of Pentecost, fire came down from heaven. Fire came down from heaven into the hearts and into the souls of the disciples. Isn't that a beautiful faith or a beautiful religion? You know, there's all kinds of different world religions. Ours is a faith where fire from heaven is sent down to burn within us. And this is a fire of love. It's a fire of joy. It's a fire of peace. How's that for a beautiful uh, faith? You know, one where, where fire is sent from heaven. And Jesus, of course, commanded us to, to be these lights, to be, become fire ourselves. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, Jesus says, You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on a lampstand where it gives light to all in the house, just so your light must shine. Jesus wants us to be filled with the light of Christ, the fire of the Holy Spirit, this holy fire, so that we can shine, so that we can radiate and we can spread this fire to others. You've heard me share before, um, years, years ago, I came up with a goal in life or a personal mission statement or whatever. I was doing some reading and different people were saying, you need to come up with a personal mission statement. You need to come up with a goal. Just like, you know, bishops, they have their motto. Every bishop has a motto. And so I did some thinking. And I, the one I came up with is four words, become fire, ignite lives. And very much based on this imagery of Jesus coming to set us on fire. And those of you who've attended the Easter vigil, you know, we start with our with our. Easter candle, which represents Christ, the light in, that shines in the darkness, and then we take the light of the candle and we spread it throughout the church. And that's, an, again, an image of what each one of us is supposed to do um, as Christians. Now, another way of kind of describing becoming fire is what uh, one of my favorite authors, Matthew Kelly, calls becoming the best version of yourself. Have you ever heard that expression before? You're supposed to become the best version of yourself. Have you ever thought about what, what, would, what would the best version of yourself look like? What would the best version of yourself be like? That's what we're all supposed to come. And, and this, this is uh, one of St. Catherine of Siena, a doctor of the church, one of her most famous quotes. She says, Be who God meant you to be, and you will set the whole world on fire. 
You see, when the Lord calls us to holiness, when He calls us to perfection, when He calls us to become fire, when He calls us to let our light shine, all He's asking us to do is to simply be who we were made to be. It's a basic principle in the spiritual life. That's all God is asking of us. Nothing more. Simply be who you were made to be. In the, in the fullest sense, as a child of God, filled with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And we know, of course, that each one of us has a very un unique, an unrepeatable calling and mission in life. Each one of us, Scripture says, is meant to, to manifest the Holy Spirit, to be a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Scripture says each is given a manifestation of the Holy Spirit to the common good. And for each one of us, that's going to be completely unique we are unrepeatable. No one was ever made like you or will be made like you. And so you have an opportunity to, to, uh, to, to let your light shine in a way that the world has never seen a star like this in the heavens before, to use another uh, biblical image. Now, as I kind of reflect on this call, this call to become fire, to be like John the Baptist and Elijah, to be... Uh, like John the Baptist, who again, Jesus says, he was a burning and shining lamp. I don't know exactly how that worked for Elijah and for John the Baptist, because I never met them. They lived a long time ago. We don't have a big, long, you know, uh, biography about their lives. It would have been very interesting to see how these men became such bright, shining lamps. But I'll tell you one thing that uh, I, I'm sure about in our own lives, if we wish to become the blazing fires, the bright shining lamps God is calling us to be, it's going to happen through patient perseverance. I think for each one of us, or for, for many of us, we can look back to a time in our life where the Lord ignited our lives, where He set our lives on fire. But that, brothers and sisters, that was only the beginning it's like when uh, most of you, you've probably lit a fire before. Usually you start with newspaper and kindling wood, and you throw a match on it, and, and it just starts to blaze. But you, you know that if you don't keep feeding that fire, it's going to die out real quick. It's going to die out as quickly as it started. Have you ever experienced that? Sometimes you put a little gasoline on. That'll really get it going. But boy, does it burn out quick unless you feed the fire. With the right size wood, you know, if you feed the fire with, with, with wood that's too big, it'll just, it'll not catch. If it's too small, it won't keep going, or it won't really build into a big blaze. Um, but so too, uh, f for each one of us, and again, in, in my own kind of walk with the Lord, with this desire to become fire, the Lord over and over again reminds me, this is only going to happen through daily, patient perseverance. There's no other way. There's no other way to really grow into the, the lights that the Lord is calling us to than, than, than this daily patient perseverance. Moving forward, oftentimes inch by inch. And also this, this, this walk towards, again, holiness, to become fire, to become light, to become love, is also one that unfortunately typically involves many falls. Again, part of, part of holiness is to be able to get up after you've fallen and keep moving ahead. That's one of Rocky. Remember, you know Rocky? <laughs> one of his big say sayings. How does it go? He says, it's not, in life it's not how hard you hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. And boy, there's so much truth to that. Amen? If a person can't get hit and keep moving forward, not going to get too far. That requires a patient perseverance, a humility, a resolve. Do we have that in our lives? I guess that's part of the reason it is good to come up with a personal mission statement or a goal in life, to keep reminding ourselves what I was made to do, what my goal in life is. When I'm dying on my deathbed, what is the one thing I want to have accomplished? And again, it'll only come through patient perseverance. Um, this is the secret to just about everything in life. You know, if, if we want to 
to, 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 to do well in school, it's going to require perseverance. Now, it's true that in grade school and maybe even high school, some people are so smart they can just breeze through. But if we really want to excel in studies, maybe into college and university, it's going to take patient perseverance. The world of sports, you know, we know that the great athletes, they have natural talent, but natural talent only takes you so far. Every great athlete will say that. People will say, oh, you're such a great talent. You're so gifted. They'll say, yeah, right. I work hard. I've worked harder than anyone else. You'll, you'll hear many great uh, athletes say that. Even family life. You know, there are so many families that struggle. Many families fall apart. For a family to stay together, for a family to stay strong, it requires patient perseverance, daily patient perseverance. Amen? Again, there's just so many things in life to learn a language. Some of you might know I'm trying to learn Spanish. There's no easy way to learn Spanish. Father Miguel keeps saying all you need to do is eat, um, what are those peppers? Jalapenos. He says, eat jalapenos. You'll learn the Spanish like that. <laughs> if only it were so easy. Again, if we want to learn a language, it's only through patient perseverance. I mean, it's, it's true. Some people have an aptitude for these things, but even with an aptitude, you still, at, at some point, you still need to apply yourself through, through effort. And it, we could use so many other uh, examples. Let's look, let's look at one more example. Let's look at the example of a musical instrument. I did a Google search today. I wrote... How many musical instruments are there? And one of the answers that came up with some musical instrument expert who was researching this, talk about, talk about uh, having too much free time, but anyways. Um, <laughs> this expert says uh, there are between 1,500 and 2,000 official musical instruments. I guess instruments that are sold as instruments or whatever. And what, I, what this made me think of is... Um, not all of us are called to play the same musical instrument. Up in Canada, it's typical when you, you know, send your child to music lessons, you get them to learn the piano. I guess it's the same down here. I, w I was having dinner with a family, and they, they were sending their, their young boy to piano lessons. And they said he was doing pretty good. He had an aptitude for it, but guess what? He didn't like playing the piano. Of the 2,000 musical instruments, I guess the piano wasn't the specific, precise instrument for him. He said he wanted to learn to play the drums. But I think the first thing, if we wish to become fire, is we need to discover what musical instrument am I destined to play? What musical instrument is perfect for me? It might not be the piano. Nothing against the piano. For some people, it is a piano. For some people, they, they, the first days, they're, the first time their finger, fingers hit those ivory keys, they knew they were destined to play the piano. That's great. But not all of us. And so again, if we wish to become fire, if we wish to become the saints we're called to be, we need to discover exactly what it is the Lord is calling us to. Again, the life of St. Thomas Aquinas was very different than the life of St. Therese of Lisieux and much different than the life of, of blessed Pierre Giorgio Frassati. Every one of us is called to unique mission. Again, St. Catherine of Siena, be who God meant you to be and you will set the world on fire. So again, what, using the analogy of musical instrument, what musical instrument was I destined to play? What musical instrument, when I pick it up, I love playing it. Now, when you discover the perfect musical instrument for you, that, that, was, that, you, that it seems that it was made just for you, you will still have to work hard at learning that instrument. Even if you love whatever you know it is, if you want to become a great musician with that instrument, you must work at it. And so too for ourselves, you know, when we discover kind of what mission it is the Lord has called us to, and you know, what, what, we are, what we are created for, we still must apply ourselves through daily effort. And this is where the prayer of the Our Father comes in. The Our Father is very much a daily prayer, reminding us that the spiritual life is lived 
one day at a time. We need to, as Christians, learn to put in a good day. To, to, to not worry about tomorrow, but let today's own troubles be sufficient for the day. And in the Our Father, again, we pray, Lord, Father, give us this day our daily bread. Again, reminding us that this journey towards the promised land, towards heaven, towards union with Christ, is, is achieved, is, is lived one day at a time, one step at a time. We will continue with the teaching by Father Mark in just a moment. The Food for Life ministry is only made possible by the financial donations from you, our viewers. We ask that after the program, you prayerfully consider a tax-deductible financial donation to help us continue this Catholic television ministry. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. Thank you for your prayers and support. And now back to Father Mark Goring. And so, brothers and sisters, we're all on this journey together. This journey is a wonderful adventure. It's meant to be a joyful adventure. St. Philip Neri said, Souls that are joyful are much easier to lead to perfection than miserable souls. Again, this, this journey towards the promised land to perfection, we need to see it as a wonderful adventure. Becoming fire needs to be not a burden like piano lessons for some people. It needs to be something we can't wait for our next opportunity to play this wonderful instrument. So brothers and sisters, discover what you are called to play, how you are called to shine like no one else and pursue that with all your heart day after day. For an audio CD or video DVD of the teaching by Father Mark Goring on The Best Version of Yourself, we invite you to write to us. Our address is Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y2T8. When you write, ask for an audio CD or video DVD of program 1717. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Set Back or Set Up. The crucifixion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. The whole world thought, what an awful setback. This good man, this holy man, this anointed man has been killed. He's dead. It's over. What a setback. No, 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 no. So, maybe you are someone who has given your life over to the Lord. You've made a commitment to Him. You've surrendered everything in your life. You've given Him permission. You feel like you've done it all. You've made your mistakes, but you've really tried to follow the Lord. You've really tried to be faithful. But you find yourself in this place, maybe even a dark place, and you're saying to yourself, what is going on? Can this really be in God's will? I thought that the decisions I made that have brought me to this place today were God's will. And yet, seemingly, there's a lack of peace, maybe, a lack of joy, confusion, and thinking, what, what does this all mean? And through your prayer life and everything else, you're, you're trying to stay in a place of hope. 
And to stay in this place of hope, we look to Jesus himself. We look at almost that scandalous scene in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Jesus was clearly led by the Holy Spirit to that point in time, to that great moment of destiny. And yet in the garden, we see Jesus saying, Father, is this really your will? That Jesus, even at this point, with, all, with, the, with the connection you'd have with God, that in, even in his humanity, he was saying, is this really your will? Of course, if it is, I will do it. And there was still a process for Jesus to go through, as we know. It wasn't until the actual resurrection where clarity came, right, for all of us. And so maybe you're in your garden right now, and your desire is to do God's will. That, that hasn't changed. But you're not so sure you know what it is anymore. And you're not so sure what the prospects for the future hold. And yet you know that the Lord is good. You know that the Lord is faithful. That whatever he has said is going to happen. And that there are a number of things that God has in place. There are promises, the things that he wants to do, that he means to do in this life. And there may be other things that go beyond, that go beyond the grave that God wants to do, things he's placed in your heart. Either way, at this place that you're in right now, the focus is that God is faithful. Even if you know the place that you're in today is maybe because of some mistakes you've made. Yeah, maybe you missed a couple of cues. It's like, well, yeah, this and this, these decisions I made, You know, they probably weren't the Lord's will. The Lord's faithfulness doesn't change. Whether, you know, whether we're in a place because of our own mistakes or because we follow God's will or often a bit of a mix, (laughs) the Lord's faithfulness is still there, that we can still trust him. That in his plan for us, he's accounted for. (laughs) He's accounted for the fact that Um, He's accounted for our own humanity. He's uh, accounted for our own sinfulness. He's accounted for the other things that are beyond our control. Our family, our friends, our relative, the economic situation. All of these things have been accounted for in God's plan. And so that, combined with his faithfulness, means that we can stay in this place of hope, even if, or I would dare say, especially if, the way forward is not clear. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are faithful. We thank you that you are so good. And we thank you for the great plans that you have for us. Plans to be filled in this life and perhaps others after this life. We thank you, Lord, for this. Lord, we cannot see the way forward. And we know that some of the reasons why we're in our current place maybe is because of our own mistakes, our own humanity. But Father, we would just pray that you would restore our hope. That despite what we see on the outside in our personal circumstances, there would be a new rainbow within a tremendous source of hope, a new sense for your goodness and your commitment to us. So come now and encourage us, Lord, by sending us the Holy Spirit anew. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We appreciate so greatly the support that you give to Food for Life through your prayers and through your financial gifts. 
From time to time, I like to read a couple of comments or letters to you or put them in our newsletter so you know that what you're doing in terms of your support, your prayers and your financial gifts, it really makes a difference in the lives of individuals. You know, Food for Life is not just about Father Mark here and, and Father Terry and Chris and myself and our producer Michael who's behind the camera, but you are equally a part of this ministry and together we all make it happen. And God, through us, works through us to bring this ministry and the good news to the people who watch. So I just want to make you aware that you're a real important and critical part of the team and to thank you for being a part of the Food for Life family. A couple of letters I want to read to you today that I hope will encourage you to know that where you're giving, where you're contributing, it really makes a difference, comes from one viewer who writes, I'm writing to thank you for helping me to invite Jesus into my heart. I'm a cradle Catholic, and I've always had a strong faith since childhood, but I've struggled with illness. The Lord's always been with me, but I came to know Him in a more personal way, and I've felt His love and His compassion and His mercy. He helped me to see good doctors, and people prayed for me. God is continuing to heal me and help me grow as a Catholic, and I pray that through Food for Life and our prayers and sacrifices that many will invite the Lord into their hearts. A second viewer writes this, how Food for Life helped her and her husband. My husband died a while back, and I wanted to say to everyone at Food for Life how much your program meant to him and to me. He was a quick-tempered man, but overcame his temper through the teachings and help of Food for Life. He became more mellow. One of your programs dealt with how to treat people, and that affected him. Your programs also helped me in my faith journey. I'm a convert to the faith and have come so much closer to Jesus by listening to Food for Life. I ask Jesus to come into my life, and I'm so happy now, and I truly believe that Jesus is with me. Thank you again for this Catholic program. It is what the world needs. And we're thankful to these two viewers who took the time to write. We were so blessed as we read these letters. And again, we're blessed by you who stand with us. If Food for Life has been a blessing to you and you've never supported the ministry, I'd invite you to prayerfully consider a regular monthly gift or a one-time gift, whatever God would put on your heart, because it's only through the collective efforts of all of us that Food for Life stays on the air. And we do need to hear from you, so please write to us at Food for Life. For an audio CD or video DVD of today's ministry, we invite you to write to us. When you write, mention the program number 1717 and today's topic, Father Mark Goring on The Best Version of Yourself. Food for Life is a non-profit Catholic charity funded only by donations from viewers. To help us continue this Catholic television ministry, please send your tax-deductible donation to Food for Life, Box 1107, Station F, Toronto, Ontario, M4Y 2T8. To save postage, you may now make your donation online. Just go to our website and follow the link. We ask you to consider a regular monthly donation, either by post-dated checks or through our website, to help fulfill the Great Commission from Matthew 28:19. Go and make disciples of all nations. Thanks to your faithful prayers and tax-deductible financial support, Food for Life is the longest-running Catholic television program in Canada. On the next edition of Food for Life, Father Mark Goring looks at Set Back or Set Up. The crucifixion and death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. The whole world thought, what an awful setback. This good man, this holy man, this anointed man has been killed. He's dead. It's over. What a setback. No, 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 no. We would like to thank you for your financial support of the Food for Life television ministry. Food for Life is funded only by viewers like yourself. We have no commercial sponsors. Your tax-deductible donations help pay for production of the program, pay the television station for the time that the program is on the air, and pay for the mailing of our monthly newsletter. Thank you again for your support of this Catholic television ministry.